Long ago, in the early years of the Second Age, the great Elden Smiths forged rings of power. Nine for mortal men. Seven for the Dwarf Lords. Three for the tall Elf Kings. But then the Dark Lord learned the craft of ring-making and made the Master Ring. The one ring to rule them all. G'day, Tragic here, and you have spoken. It is Lord of the Rings. Boy, awesome. Well, you know, Boohoha isn't really, uh, you know, applicable to this one because we're. This is a very nice, fun game. It's uh, sort of fam more family orientated. Now, we are playing the Wizard of the Coast version, and that means there's going to be some sort of incongruities between the pieces and the chits that we see in here and what you might have seen on Board Game Geek in some of the photos. Now, for those of you interested in the stats, Alien Frontiers got a pitiful four votes, which is a real shame just because that is such a quality game. Sentinels of the Multiverse got five votes, and the real strange one is Touch of Evil, which wasn't even on the list, got four votes, almost as much as Sentinels, and it wasn't even on the list. It just goes to show you how good that game is. And of course, the real competition was Arkham Horror and Curse of the Dark Pharaoh, which got a total of 14, but Lord of the Rings it got 17 votes clear winner and I'm quite happy because I'm keen to play this now I will also be playing the battlefield uh, expansion now the battlefield expansion adds this kind of mini game puzzle system to it for combat. It's very, very cool and pretty fun. Now, this is actually from Fantasy Flight and you can see, notice that the Fantasy Flight is red. And I'm also going to be playing Friends and Foes, which is a very normal kind of expansion. It adds new boards, new characters, and some slightly different events that we can go through. It does extend the playtime quite a lot because it's basically like like the quest the quest in Lord of the Rings is basically in two different stages each represented on the opposite side first and the up opposite side of the board and this basically adds two more stages so you you can either play those two, these two boards Oop, that's my phone Okay, I'm back. Well, anyway, this is a really cool game, and we are about to see it in action. Whoa. But just so you know, there is another expansion called Sauron that we will not be playing. And this is because this is a cooperative game, and it was one of the first cooperative games. If not, I mean, someone might have to check this for me, but I'm pretty sure this is like the first of the modern, what we call cooperative games nowadays. Anyway, this, uh, this version adds an opponent player. So it's... It's the Fellowship versus Sauron. One person plays Sauron, everyone else plays the Fellowship. So we won't be playing that, but that is a very cool expansion. If I hold it up the right way as well. Okay, so uh, Lord of the Rings coming up shortly. <laughs> One does not simply walk into Mordor. Okay, so this is it. Lord of the Rings. Set up and ready to start playing. Now, it looks very busy, but it's not really that complicated. It's actually a fairly simple game. It's just that the add-ons kind of make it a little more cumbersome. So we'll just have a quick look at what we've got here. Now, this is called the main board, okay? And this is here for the whole game. We're actually, I think I'm actually going to make the game a bit easier and put Siren up the end. Now, what happens is Siren moves this way and the Hobbits move this way, okay? And this track represents uh, the, 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 the progress of the quest and the progress of Sauron searching for the hobbits. Now, over here, you see all these little circles. Should be a dude on there. These represent the different locations. Like, this is Bag End. This is Bree. That's actually a sticker that you have to put on this board to add an extra circle. I agonized over putting that sticker on there for days and days and days. But anyway, I did in the end, and it's never peeled off, which is good. But, uh, so, as you travel, you eventually will move to Bree, okay? And then, you know, there's Bree, Rubensdell, Moria, Lothlorien, Isengard, that's again one of the, the expansions, Helm's Deep, Shelob's Lair, and finally Mordor. Put that back in Hobbit Town. Now, you might recognize this mechanic. These are location decks 
that are associated with these areas, but they work a bit different to Arkham Horror. They're a little more cumbersome, and this is a, this is an older game. So when we reach, say, Rivendell, we pick up this entire set of cards and we shuffle it into the draw deck, and it puts all the things like the people we've met uh, and the the items we've picked up, and it's all greatly themed. What do you see it? And uh, you know, when we move to say Moria, we'll pick up the Moria deck. When we're in, you know, well, when we ever go to a location on this chart we pick up and shuffle a deck into it now this is the Brie board that we start on now again Brie is actually part of the expansion it adds two extra boards and these things here whoop, these things here are all part of the uh, combat expansion the battlegrounds now it's a bit of a shame because they cover up the absolutely mind-blowing art in this game all these little chits now I'll show you this board when all the chits are moved on because when we pass this board we've got to advance a little token down all these different tracks and when we do we move to another board this for example is the Moria board and on the back we have the Helm's Deep board Look at that wow here we have Shelob's Lair and of course Mordor itself here we have a funky little dice that we're going to be using. We're going to keep rolling that. And it's got all these different it's a wooden dice too, which is awesome. It's got all these different uh, special sides. And you'll see that in action later. And here is one of the battle boards. And again, these battle boards change... This is the Brie battle board, and on the other side is the Moria battle board. Okay, now these are, can you see that in shot? Yeah. These are the monster tokens for the Brie battle board. And over here, this one for example, is the tokens, can I get that in shot? This one is the tokens for the Helm's Deep battle board. And I'll show you how these work when I get to it. Now up here, we have the Gandalf deck. Now, this could be a single stack of cards, but what's interesting about the Gandalf deck is that you purchase these, and it's like purchasing special abilities. They're one off you discard the card and it's gone and it costs like five shields I'll, you'll, you'll find out how all that works but basically you can select these abilities and they're key and of course it's very fitting with the theme because Gandalf just pops up helps you and zips off over here we have the draw deck this is where we shuffle all our stuff into and this is used to run the hobbits and you'll see that in action later on we have a tile deck shield deck and then we've got these tokens here and you'll see them all in action later on now that's all from the original rules but this deck is new this is from friends and foe now tell me if you've heard if you've heard of this mechanic before what happens is as you play the game encounter cards are revealed from the encounter deck and these are things you have to deal with right much like the lord of the rings the card game in fact exactly like that and we'll be seeing that in action later on okay so we're set up we're ready to rumble and oh and of course here is our hobbits Pippin, Frodo, Sam, Fatty and Mary now Fatty might not be known to some of you anyway uh, this is the ring this is like the first player marker and uh, yeah so and these these cards have abilities on them that they can use okay now Mary for instance for each scenario you may only need two different like tokens and in the expansion we got a, a second ability as well on your turn instant to defeat all displayed foes requiring life tokens you'll see them in action later now the way if you play this is for a five player game and we're going to be playing with all the hobbits but if you only play with two hobbits you only get these two hobbits it's uh it's it's set sort of combinations now for an elite game we play the corruption starts at 12 but i'm tempted to move that up to make it a bit easier for me because we've got all these mechanics running at once and i haven't played this for literally years but come on no we're going to do 12 let's let's do it properly so this is basically the corruption okay and what you want to do we want to force sour on this way and keep him away from the hobbits otherwise he's corrupted them okay so that is lord of the rings and uh yeah let's uh let's get started i'm just going to upload the this intro and expect to see some turns popping up in the near future catch you next time and remember have fun and roll high long ago in the early years of the second age the great elven smiths forged rings of power Nine for mortal men, seven for the dwarf lords, three for the tall elf kings. But then the dark lord learned the craft of ring making and made the master ring.
The one ring to rule them all.